Hey, YouTube neighborhood. <laughs> it's me, Shannon. Uh, for those of you that might be new subscribers or don't know me, um, I'm going to make a couple videos tonight. I'm going to sit down and do it because I know I've been pretty lacking in that department <laughs> lately. But anyway, I'm going to talk. My last one was on vagina. And I want to talk just a little bit more about them in this one, and then I'll make another video. And all I really want to add on the subject is, I mentioned in my previous video, the two main or um, well-known procedures used today for, for um, vaginoplasty. And that's a, obviously a penile inversion. And the rectosigmoid is like an additional surgery to that, or could be looked at that way. And um, actually, there's many different techniques and, and uh, procedures used, because, you know, just depending on the individual and how much material they have to work with, uh, if there's damage to certain parts, or they need tissue, or they need might need skin grafting, uh, who knows, there's a whole bunch of things, and I'm sure your surgeon, if you're a candidate for doing this one day, is going to give you his best um, assessment <laughs> um, about procedure, and he's going to market and sell you his procedure, because he wants the business, I mean, that's just part of the game. So, where you go is is what you need to think about um, beforehand. Um, try to, that's what I'm trying to do, is educate myself on the finished product. And when I read about the recto sigmoid, it really got my attention because, you know, I mean, it's the more expensive procedure. It's a few thousand dollars more than a typical penile grafting or inversions or the different techniques out there that most commonly are used. However, um, what attracts me, of course, is the vaginal depth and diameter and the self-lubricating and all the things that it has that, that um, are a little more enhanced, I think, than the typical inversion uh, method. So that's really all I wanted to to add to it, I mean, I'm kind of repeating myself, but what I left out is that there's more than two techniques. You know, basically a penile inversion, we all get that. Um, that's the cosmetic end of it. I don't think vaginoplasty is cosmetic surgery. I separate this whole operation uh, from like a boob job or facial feminization or buttocks or any modification to cosmetically feminize yourself. Those could be considered um, cosmetic surgeries, but I don't agree with it that a vaginal plastic is cosmetic surgery. I think it is after you've got one and maybe it needs some some revision or something because maybe something went wrong or it didn't turn out right and you cosmetically want to make it different. Then it would be a cosmetic procedure, but but getting it Initially, I don't look at that as a cosmetic. I look at it as part of our dysphoria and, and uh, aligning our dysphoric um, thought process with our anatomy. So, therefore, I really feel it should be covered under insurance and all those other wonderful things that we fight for, for our equality. Anyhow, so that's kind of all I wanted to add. <laughs> that. Um, you probably all knew it anyway, but for those that maybe didn't, I'm making this video and putting it out there. So I'll make another video and talk to you all soon. Bye.